Preston Physics, Grade 11, Kinematics, Note 10. Area under slopes. For this note, we're going to look at the area under the slope of a graph. We're going to look at two graphs, an acceleration time graph and a velocity time graph. To start with, our acceleration time graph, we're going to have a constant acceleration, so a straight line horizontally. Now, when we look at this, we're going to create a box, meaning that we're taking the acceleration from the starting point to a certain time. Now, we know that area of a box is length times width, and in this case, our y is our length, and our x is our width. When we put in our values, we have the difference in our acceleration times the difference in our time. Now, if we look at the units for these two things, when we have acceleration times time, we actually cancel out our meters per second squared, and it just becomes meters per second. And these, of course, are the units for velocity. So the area under the graph, or under the slope, of an acceleration time graph works out to be the velocity of the object we're dealing with. Now the second graph we're going to look at is the velocity time graph. We're going to look at it in the exact same way. We're going to have a constant velocity. We're going to create a little box so that we can easily find the area and then we're going to calculate what the area under that line actually means. So again, we have the area of a box is equal to length times width, which we know is the difference in our x and the difference in our y. Our y value in this case being our velocity, and our x value in this case being our time. When we look at the units, we again end up cancelling out the units for velocity and then making them into the units for displacement. We're left with meters here, again, which is our unit of displacement. So the area under a velocity time graph is equal to the displacement of the object that we're looking at. Now that we've looked at all of these three graphs, we can make a quick summary using displacement, velocity, and acceleration. All of these graphs would be relative to time. Now if we're going from displacement to velocity, we need to find the slope of the curve on that graph. And then from velocity to acceleration, we need to find the slope as well. Going back the other way, we need to find the area under the graph for each case. Let's look at the first example where we have a jet that's taking off. And we need to find the velocity of this jet after one second, two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. Now, the acceleration is constant, and it's at three meters per second squared. So we're going to have a straight line that's horizontal for our constant acceleration. We need to then identify our one second, two second, three second, and four seconds on our x-axis. To find our velocity, we need to break these into little squares. So we're going to, in each case, use length times width. In the first case, we're going to use 3 meters per second squared times 1 second. This, of course, equals to 3 meters per second. Now we're going to do the same process for all four of our values. We're going to look at 2 seconds now. We have length times width again. We have 3 meters per second squared times 2 seconds. So this now equals to 6 meters per second. And you'll see that we go through this same process again and again for both 3 seconds and 4 seconds, finding the velocities to be 9 meters per second and 12 meters per second, respectively. Try the last question on your own, where you have to find the displacement at 4 seconds and again at 8 seconds. The 4 seconds is very similar to what we just did. The 8 seconds is a little more difficult, where we have to break the graph down into four separate parts, find the areas of all of those parts, and then add them together. One of your parts should be a triangle in this case. The question associated with this note is 27C from your yellow duotang.